Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. And in this video, we are checking out the Supernote A6X2 and the latest update, which is the update 320. 29? Yeah, but 20 is the main uh, subversion of this one. So this one, you know, brings a lot of fixes and some optimizations and some kind of improvements. So let's check it out. So before I get on to the stuff that I can actually test out and, and uh, check, I'm just going to go through the list of fixes. So things that have been fixed in the issue 320, fix the issue where files could still be accessed when the device was connected via USB to a computer running Mac OS and Linux with the screen locked. Okay, fix the issue where last wing handwritten content would occasionally trigger a paste function or action. I didn't actually get that. I did get the misinterpretation uh, of the palm, but I didn't get that. Fix the issue where auto rotation on the screen triggered by accident sometimes prevented writing. Didn't get that, uh, but it's good that it's fixed. Fix the issue where handwriting performed immediately after switching from a document to a note might sometimes be lost. Fix the issue where exporting notes to docs, X would sometimes fail. Uh, wrong path was displaying after exporting notes, notes doc X. Um, documents fixed the issue where text selection was unavailable using a Bluetooth keyboard in a Word document. That's actually cool. That was uh, that was something that yeah was definitely lacking. It's not like a fixed thing. It was missing. Um, fix the issue with the keyboard where the handwriting keyboard would occasionally fail to recognize handwriting input. Huh. Uh, I think I actually had that uh, happen a couple of times. So quite a few fixes and it seems that somebody has turned their attention towards the doc X in the Word documents functionality, which is a good thing because yeah, while it does have it, it's really severely lacking. Now let's see what's adjusted and optimized. That's usually where new features are. So the adjusted system, after pressing and holding the power button for less than five seconds, you can now select restart or power on off. Previously, we had only power off. Now we have restart. So that's kind of cool. Then we have restored the stylus non-contact writing section setting option. All right, I guess it's in display input stylus uh, calibration. And now we have non-contact writing. And this is three behaviors for non-contact writing. Oh, I remember this. This was a long time ago. So now they have that again. I didn't know that they actually took it away. That was kind of strange, but okay. Good to know that that's back. Um, even though I don't get it why they took it away. It was a good calibration, even though it's nerdy, but it is a good one to actually have because it allows you to fine tune the behavior of the um, of the stylus and the device itself. Okay, mail updated logging process for Microsoft Exchange and Outlook Hotmail. I don't use any of those, neither do I have those uh, email accounts, so I can't really test that. And in notes, align the marker stroke width on Nomad with that of A6X and A5X. That I did notice uh, when A6X2 came out, and that is a cool thing to see. Uh, even though I don't understand why they changed it, because if you go into the notes, the the size is actually expressed in uh, real world size. It's supposed to be real world, right? So this is supposed to be one millimeter width. This is supposed to be uh, 0.6 width and then et cetera, et cetera, right? 0.3. So 0.3 is the one that I'm normally writing with and this is supposed to be 0.1, the ultra fine liner. And what I don't get is like, aren't these supposed to reflect what they say they are? That they are physically representing one millimeter, uh, 0, 0.6, 0, 0.3 and 0, 0.1. Uh, but yeah, okay, uh, I guess that's now fixed. And I do notice that it actually, the, the values do re correspond better to what I'm used to uh, what I had on a five X. All right. And then we have optimizations note supports long pressing headings and links with the stylus to enter editing mode. That is pretty sweet, 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 because it, uh, eliminates more clicks and it's more on the go. So let's, um, test my heading. Okay. So if I do a select here, and then I turn it into a heading of this type. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this is my 
a link. And we're going to put this into a link of some sort to a page in a current file. And we're just going to go to, um, yeah, I don't know, something before, something maybe here or something like that. It doesn't matter. Like this. Okay. So now when I'm writing, I should be able to um, blah, 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 right, 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 right. And then say like, hey, I want to check. Cool. Now these are the cool things to actually f have. Um, I, I like uh, creature comforts and uh, um, basically comfort of life for the user type of features like this, because this makes perfect sense. What I'm kind of curious is with the link, do you need to kind of press on the, okay, so if you press on the link icon, it works. Cool. If you press on the like link itself, no. No. Okay. So on the links, you do still have to be kind of careful where you, no, actually it rec recognizes the whole text. That's very smart. So you don't have to be careful and press on the link icon at all. You can do the, yeah, anywhere. And it's like, okay, I want this to be like this, actually. Cool. Okay, so th this seems like a really simple thing. And it is, but it is so handy that uh, it's a really, really welcome thing to see because it just makes it so much easier and uh, to, to work with that you don't have to go mm, to tool, mm, to this, mm, to that. And uh, if you have happen to have a um, pen uh, with the button and then you have the button as the select tool functionality, then you can just be in full screen mode and you don't have, you, you can just flow and work. And that's a very, very nice thing to see. Um, yeah, sorry for the nerd out, but <laughs> I'm, I really appreciate when uh, simple good solutions are implemented. And this is one of them. Now we have the um, clear history. So if I go clear, clear recent uh, usage history, this action cannot be undone. And then I can clear it and it should be gone. And that's it. Okay, so that's had definitely a handy thing to have. All right, before I do the document testing, there's a sidebar optimized reliability of the sidebar gestures. So this one definitely is more responsive. And I do like it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten out of ten gestures now for the refreshing worked. So I'm going to test on the other one as well. And the gesture that I do have is that if I, uh, that I use mostly is basically holding this to uh, have a selection, right? So that I can get into a selection. So what I'm measuring is uh, how many uh, in 10 uh, attempts, how many are there going to be fails? So let's try one, two. I'm trying to be like just super fast. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 out of 10. That is definitely an improvement because this is something that I do use uh, consistently. And although it was good, uh, and this one was also okay, th uh, this is an improvement that I actually can uh, immediately feel. So that's a very nice thing to see as well. Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to be able to test this. I do have one page turner, Bluetooth page turner, the one that I'm using, the, uh, but I've never tried it with this. So um, I'm going to see if it pairs up and if I can even use it and if it does anything or not. All right, so it actually recognized this one and I found it. I was able to pair with it and it's blinking like it's connected. So let's open up a document and see if it works. Now, I've never used this one for a uh, previous next page. So I don't know which are the commands that would work on it. But I'll just try all of the buttons. Hey, there we go. There we go. It works. So this definitely works. And if I flip it to a, uh, yep, it actually works with the 
page previous and next and this is actually pretty sweet because um, it's very very reactive it, I'm surprised how reactive it is I didn't expect it to be that immediate but it is it's uh, actually pretty cool so let's see how accurate it is we're on page 10 and I'm gonna go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten uh, he missed one. Okay, so let's try a bit slower. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, that's correct. Let's go back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, that works. So, yeah, I was surprised, but definitely works. All right, and one of the things in an earlier version that I didn't have a chance to actually test uh, before is that um, I think that they said that they've improved uh, Bluetooth keyboard shortcuts functionalities that which was a really really bad uh, option before that you could that you could now use select and control, uh, but there we go so it still works like this which is kind of weird but it does work okay uh, it's still buggy and uh, that's still not fixed but I remember one of the things was that you could bold it now yes you can so you can bold underline italic so if I go backspace okay backspace now works control Z works okay so some of the stuff is there but the main problem for me is that you see now um, after Control Z, I'm no longer in keyboard mode, so I can't really type, and I need to interact with the device to get into the interaction mode. So that's not working, and the select mode is not working as it should on a text processor, especially not if you're working on a doc file. It's not working as it should because right now. Is still working as before where you hold shift and you go down to select a line and if you go left and right it's moving the whole select thing which is not how a word processor works the way it should work is two main things are missing when you're pressing control and you're going with the arrows it should be skipping each word uh, or between spaces not between each character so that's one of the main things that's missing still and also when you hold shift and you start moving the arrow it should enter into select mode and it should select characters and then you have the combination of shift and control to actually combine those things and that's still not there so while some of the stuff like turning it into uh, bold italic underline and that kind of stuff while that works um, it's still very very far from where I could uh, consider using something like this as a standard thing mainly because the, the, the uh, standards of navigation in word processing are not working and they're not implemented there as they should be. Well I wasn't sure what to expect from the update 320 on the Supernote A6X2 simply because previous updates were mm, this and that this and that and it's been a while since we had like a good new functionality introduced but this is a really nice thing actually to see that I know it's a small thing but for somebody who uses this device uh, regularly then you will understand how cool this uh, functionality is and if you rely on headings and links which is one of the strong points of the Supernote uh, um, platform then you will probably geek out as well uh, over the new functionality of just holding and being able to edit the uh, heading and the links on the fly like that because that is just so so like mwah, really really good way of implementing these things to streamline the workflow on a platform like this and generally it's nice to see that this actually uh, what's listed here actually works it was also a nice surprise to see that the bluetooth page turner worked without any hitch or without any problems so if that's something that you might find useful especially because you can share the screen on a projector or something like that then definitely it's something to keep in mind um, that you may find useful 
All right, I hope that you liked the video and that you found it informative and or useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description below. And also remember to visit the mydeepguy.com slash shop where you can find MDO and MMP, both of which are hyperlinked PDF document files that help you organize in the case of MDO your whole year, quarter, monthly, weekly, daily, uh, personal or, or professional organizing needs. In the case of MMP, you get to organize, simplify, centralize and organize all of your meeting planning needs. If anything uh, like that sounds interesting, check out the hyperlinks to the playlists below. And of course, know that buying these products directly supports the independence of my deep guide and my work. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.